Hello students. Welcome back to my channel, The Goddess of Econ. Today's lecture covers the concept of the modified duration of a bond. If you haven't studied its cousin, Macaulay duration yet, please watch my previous video first, as these two are interrelated concepts. But of course, modified duration is a more important metric than its cousin, Macaulay duration, and is used in practice a lot more often. So, if you want to gain a decent understanding of this important concept in finance, please follow, follow me. Let me begin by saying that, compared to Macaulay duration, modified duration is a relatively easy concept to grasp. This metric simply tells you how sensitive the bond's price is to a small change in its yield. Mathematically, without using calculus, we can simply express the modified duration of a bond as minus 1 over p times delta p over delta r. For those who are not mathematically minded, this simple definition may not look simple. But don't worry mathphobes. The goddess of econ will explain it thoroughly for you. Well, the very last fraction, delta p over delta r, represents a change in p, the bonds price, divided by a change in r, the yield to maturity. To be exact, delta p in the numerator denotes a change in p, that is due to a small change in r. Now, this is divided by p, the initial price of a bond, to express the price change in terms of percentages. Lastly, the minus sign in front is there for the purpose of making the whole metric a positive number, as the last fraction comes out always negative. That is, if yield goes up, price goes down, and if yield goes down, price goes up, and so forth. Again, the minus sign is there to simply make the duration a positive number. That's pretty much it. Well, still not getting it? You are a mathphobe? Again, don't worry. You will get it if you study the next slides with me. So, keep on following me. Now, let's suppose the modified duration of a bond is 3. What does it mean? Well, it simply means, if yield to maturity, R, goes up by, let's say 0.1 percentage point, then the bond's price goes down by, about 0.3%. Now, what if yield goes down by, let's say half a percentage point? Given that the modified duration is 3, the price will move by about 1.5% in the opposite direction. Please note that, 1.5 is simply 3 times 0.5. Not too difficult, was it? Let's look at one more example. Now, suppose that the modified duration of a bond is 5. If its yield goes up by 0.2 percentage point, how much will the price move? Well, in this example as well, you can conjecture that the price will go down by about 1% in response to a 0.2 percentage point increase in its yield, as 0.2 times duration of 5 is equal to 1. However, you need to keep in mind that these are just approximations, not exact changes that will actually take place. Consider this just a first-order approximation of a bond's price movement. Next, let's examine how different, modified duration is from Macaulay duration, or how close they are to each other, through some examples. Okay. Here's a three-year bond with coupon rate of 3% per annum, with annual coupon frequency. Let's further suppose that the bond is priced at par. In my previous lecture on Macaulay duration, I have shown you that the Macaulay duration of this bond is about 2.91, which is very close to the bond maturity of three years. What do you think the modified duration of the same bond is? Well, Goddess's own calculation shows that it's 2.83, slightly lower than its cousin, but still quite close. Let's look at another example. Here, the coupon rate is assumed higher at 6% per annum. Due to the coupon effect, the Macaulay duration is now lower than before at 2.83. What do you think the modified duration has become? Well, Goddess's own calculation shows that, this time it's 2.67, which is indeed lower than its cousin, but still close enough. Now, let's look at the case where the coupon rate is only 1%. This time, Macaulay duration is 2.97, which is extremely close to the bond's maturity of three years. How about modified duration? Wow, it's 2.94. Now, you see that these two metrics are not much different from each other. How about an extreme hypothetical case where coupon is zero, and the Macaulay duration is exactly three years? Just for your information, I have explained in my previous lecture that Macaulay duration comes out the same as the bond's maturity in this case, as all the cash flows occur only in year 3. But how about modified duration? It's exactly 3 as well. So far, I haven't shown you how to calculate the modified duration of a bond, 
as it involves a little bit of calculus, that is, differentiation. But there is a shortcut. That is, you can derive modified duration from the Macaulay duration based on the following simple equation. Wow, looks quite neat, doesn't it? The formula tells us that if you discount the Macaulay duration using the yield to maturity, you get modified duration. Aha, that's why modified duration was always shorter than Macaulay duration. However, please also keep in mind that the above simple formula only applies to the case where coupons are annually paid, and annual compounding is assumed. And, in the last case where we assumed the coupon rate was 0%, they came out the same, as yield to maturity was simply zero. So, in summary, modified duration is a concept that is quite closely related to its cousin, Macaulay duration. It basically shows you approximately how much a bond's price would change in response to a small change in its yield. In my next finance lecture, I will cover how to derive a formal version of the modified duration formula, using some calculus. So, students, please do visit again. And never forget to like and subscribe before you go. May God bless you all.